Hey there, Manlo here, and uh, just want to make a video for you to talk about uh, a new new love of mine that I met on the weekend and spent some time with on Saturday, Sunday, and I've been uh, building a relationship with ever since. It's uh, no surprise it's OpenAI, it's ChatGPT. I had known about it for a while, I would say back since it started making the news in November, and uh, recently, near the end of this semester, I'm a high school teacher. A few students submitted work for a unit, and when I looked at it, uh, I was kind of like a little bit peaked in terms of thinking, this just doesn't seem right. So I used some tools that, that, that we have to, to check the um, originality of work and to check the, the draft back. Uh, we'll look at a student's work to see um, what draft... Um, what their draft versions look like and, and how much how many keystrokes and, and, and things they did on a doc and then looking at the Google Doc revisions and it just didn't match up. So I figured this was that chat GPT that a lot of people have been talking about in the news and I'd heard that kids were playing around with and I'd seen a kid in my geography class using it and I'd I'd intended to take a look at it for a while and this weekend I woke up Saturday morning and woke up earlier on five o'clock thinking I gotta check this out. So I just got up, logged on, jumped in, and started going down the rabbit hole. And I, I'm gonna share with you just my initial uh, rabbit hole journey. I have some ideas for some other videos later, but this one is just to kind of show you my initial sort of deep dive into ChatGPT uh, through the purpose of designing a course. So as an educator designing a new course that I have, this SEM2, I'm experimenting with using ChatGPT to do all the design work. And so I guess best way here is we'll just jump into the tab and I'll show you kind of how that works. So when you get into ChatGPT, you can start a chat and you see I've got some running chats along the side here so far. It, it keeps your chats there and the thread that you've established. And you see here kind of how I first started out. So this is the course that I'm, I'm doing and I said I need a four unit syllabus. What would be four good units? Um, now that I've been through it a while, I would actually be more specific here. A grade 12 course for the Ontario curriculum called World History since 1500. And that's going to actually pull or generate uh, better responses from the AI. And you'll kind of just see where I go through this. But what really what I want to highlight is just how useful a tool it is, an assistant, for doing a lot of the laborious work that I would do to design a course. Next thing I asked it would be what are some essential understandings students should get from taking the course, things that should take away as key learning. So really the essential understandings that I want to draw out. These are what it, it provided me here. And you can pause this video at any time and, and scroll through these and look at the quality of them. I think they're, they're quite good. Then I wanted to know what would be some important inquiry questions student could ask themselves to investigate and explore these essential understandings. So I've got a set of inquiry questions here that it gave me and I learned later that what I could do is if I didn't like this prompt, I could click this edit button and you'll see this a little bit further down. It will pull this up and I can submit, edit and submit this again and it will generate a new query response um, and it'll say like one out of two or two out of two and then I can flip back and forth within this um, generation to see different examples of what I looked at. So then I know this is Guy Jared Diamond. I wanna connect his book uh, and ideas about geographic determinism to this course. Boom, several ways. And it gives me four ways that I can make sure that I connect it to it. Top five things to teach about that first unit, age of exploration. So I wanna kinda of get a sense of what are those things I should really hit on. See those there. You're gonna see me go down a rabbit hole here where I do some things that I think Google could probably do. Um, Google's not going to feed this back to me um, like, a, like a chat generated response. So that, that would be a difference here. And you see, this one's motivation based. So it gives me some of those um, different areas of motivation. See here, I look at effect on indigenous peoples. That's a focus I wanna make. So it, it mentions those impacts. Uh, where I'm going next, I, I'm not. this is not so much what I'm impressed with or what I would use it with, but I, I just followed the rabbit hole to see the information that it would give me. Information there. Then specifically, I look at a Native American group that was most impacted and I wanna know what it says. So it tells me the Cherokee Nation provide some information about that. I ask some, what are some good inquiry questions to further investigate this. I get a whole set here on the colonization of the Cherokee Nation. You can use those with students. If I focus on the Trail of Tears as one, and I wanna compare it to similar events in other indigenous people's history. So then they make a link between this and other events that have to share similarities. 
I'm now curious to know, can you suggest to me or give me uh, the most important Native American indigenous leaders who fought and resisted these explorers, colonizers, settlers? And it generates a list of five. I'd said a most important. I could tell it who were 10, who were 20. Um, I could switch that, who were the most important South American uh, indigenous leaders. I could switch it to African leaders. Um, and it, the, the response would generate different ones. You see there, it tells the nation, or the, sorry, the, the indigenous group and the person. I have in the past had students generate things like Instagram posts or fake Instagram posts. I wanted to see if ChatGPT could do that uh, on Sitting Bull. It generates a post here for me. And as a teacher, what that makes me think is if ChatGPT can generate an Instagram post, then one, should I still have students do this in activity as an activity? And two, if it can generate that, then what else could I have them do with this if it's produced? So is it just the communication by presenting that in a different form of media to show, to communicate what, what they learned? And I think you, you would learn something by reading through this. You could even have a conversation with a student about this and have them explain a little bit about their Instagram post that's there. This one gets at perspective, so I want to see if I can have ChatGPT um, generate a response based on, on perspective. Generates perspectives. Can you give me five good debate topics so students can show me they understand European settlers and explorers as well as the perspective and impact of settler colonialism on indigenous peoples in North America? Here are five potential debate topics. I'll hold them up there for a second. What I want you to note that uh, what I noticed as I went through this is that the better I got at formulating my query to ChatGPT, the better my responses were because it was then pulling from more specific information that I was feeding it. I wanted to see if it could give me 10 multiple choice questions to check understanding on that unit. There they are. I can then ask it for the answers, which I did on a different one over here. I had multiple choice questions for geography and asked it for the answers and it provides those, those answers. I went through these and checked them. I've had students before write music or raps about certain time periods and I wanted to see if it would do this. Well, it wrote me a rap on the age of exploration. It said it's not able to generate a rap song, but then I did it. So there's that one. Asked for a title in the song. Three to five good short answer questions. Gave me five. Then I wanted to know, can it generate a slideshow for me with 10 to 15 slides? It doesn't actually make the slideshow, but it tells me what would go on each. And specifically, I'm talking about wanting an overview uh, and that each slide needs a title, a few, few key points. So it tells you each slide, what the title would be, a few key points that goes on it. Okay. Again, pause this video at any point, take a look at the information that's here. I asked it to find pictures and I guess I knew that it couldn't generate pictures or at least um, pull pictures into this because it's just a chat based model, but it did tell me some search or keywords to search for them. Now I wanted to play around. I've had kids do this with a book called The History According to Facebook. I wanted to know, could it make a fictional text chat between two people, two historical figures, where they pretend to show their experiences exploring the new world? Boom. Right there. You could do this in any subject area. Have a science of, scientist of the past, scientist of the, the present have a conversation, have a character from a movie or a TV show, have a conversation with a real life person. Um, you could set the topic for the conversation and what they're talking about, and it will generate this. And the question I then have is if ChatGPT can generate this, then what might I get students to do with this that would demonstrate um, some learning that I want them to be able to show me in the course? Again, I just scroll through. I wanted to could it write a rap from the perspective of sitting bull. Boom, not a bad job. Could it also write me a blog post from the perspective of an indigenous author talking about the impact of settler colonialism, reference guns, germs, and steel, as well as Spanish conquistadors. So I wanted it specifically to see if it would pull those things in there. And sure enough, it generated a blog post. I want you to notice as you'll see with a lot of uh, chat GPT generated um, posts or even essays, that the format for these paragraphs looks quite similar in terms of length and amount of content per paragraph. I wanted to see if it would give me a top 10 list for an assignment that ranks the top 10 achievements of this particular unit, Unit 1, The Age of Exploration. There you go. I'm a, I'm a real music lover, rap music lover, and I wanted to know, could it actually write me a, a 
a certain number of bars about Guns, Germs, and Steel in the style of Eminem. It chugged away a little bit on this one, but it came up with something. Again, not too bad. Asked if it could do a joke. The style of Chris Rock, not really a great joke. Any good movie clips to show the age of exploration. Any modern TV shows that address the same age, European settlers and explorers, generates that for me. Can you give me some books to learn about it? I need ideas for an infographic, 10 specific points to include. That's what my infographic would have on it. Give me three exit card questions to use with students at the end of a lesson. Wanted a feminist perspective on the age of exploration and settler colonialism because I noticed I wasn't getting that and wondered how can I um, generate that without having to spend the time to, to go and, and compile it. And there it is. Now you'll see me get a little bit more specific. I'm using the Ontario curriculum for grade 12. I got the title wrong here still. It's history, world history since the 15th century uh, or since 1500. 20 seminar topics, boom. 20 seminar topics right there. Can it generate success criteria? I switched courses here because I wanted to know for another course, could I use thinking concepts? And there, generates some success criteria. Get ready. Some good whiteboard activities for students to do. Not mind blowing. Gives me some ideas though. There they are. What to do within them, how to do them. Um, down here. I need to demonstrate specific connections between various video game versions of Assassin's Creed, which I've played almost all of them, and I know there's historical references, but I do not want to go through uh, YouTube videos or the games and try and find all those things that are the best examples of uh, this time period in history. So I asked it to make me a list, and then it gives 10 specific events, people, and issues that link to the, the curriculum in that course, and there they are. And having played the game, I know they're there. If you got any gamers in your classroom, this would be a great way to hook interest in a class. This would be simpler to like, um, if you if you had kids playing Call of Duty that took place during World War One or World War Two, this would be very similar. There'd be things in there that connect to what you're teaching in history class, Canadian grade ten Canadian history class. This one's interesting. I wanted to, and I've had kids look at songs before and draw connections from a song and an event, issue, or person. Uh, I wanted to know if it could do an analysis of a song and show historical influences. It wasn't able to do that because it didn't notice any specific historical events or not specific enough. Because of my knowledge base, I could draw them out. The, the GPT generator wasn't able to because it wasn't specific enough. I was making some inferences or, or connections that, that weren't clearly there. So notice where I go with it. I pick another song to see if it can do it with a different song. Still can't do it with, a, with a, this song, but it talks about the themes that I'm interested in. So the themes of this song uh, right here, the song's main themes are anxiety, fear, and sense of being trapped. So what I did was, and this is what I, the reason I'm showing you this, I want you to notice how I'm now generating a better response than the one I had by looking at what it can do and seeing if I can meld it or mix it with something else that's going to generate what I'm looking for. So I take the theme right here and now I tell I'm trying to find historical figures who might think about or discuss the themes of anxiety, fear, and a sense of being trapped. Now I get a list of figures and now I might be able to have kids do that activity by matching a song with the person and trying to, to pull those connections out of it. You'll notice it's a mix of, of males and females. I don't see many people for, who are not Western, so I asked for non-Western people. Sure, here they are. You notice some of these dates, these all fall within the date, dates that I specified. Can't specifically interpret a song. Just scroll through a little bit here because these are just historical figures. I played around with that a bit. Um, now I know the activity I'm going to do. This is what I want them to do. Analyze song lyrics, connect the themes, to life of a particular individual between that time period. I need at least one learning goal, several, su several success criteria from the curriculum. Boom. There's my learning goal. There's my success criteria. More than I would use, probably. I would be picky and choosy about which ones I continue with. Then I was curious, can you generate a rubric for the success criteria? Sure. Here's a sample rubric. As I, as I went through this, it, it, it was mind blowing. And it probably, I might not sound as mind blown as I did initially because I've been playing with it and I, Still impressed by what it can do, but I'm I'm beginning to see the, the utility and the value and the efficiency of using this as an assistant to help me plan and do the things I want to do in the class and free up my time. 
So there's the rubric it pumped out. And in you, it just, it, it just like it's typing this out. It's so quick as it jots it down. If you didn't like it, you could regenerate it. You could actually give it the particular um, criteria on the side and switch those up. But there's a rubric that I can use, edit, it's good to go. Then I ask, can I adapt this activity to accommodate a student that's got limited reading abilities and verbal expression? Here's some adapt adaptations or accommodations. Now I know what I want to do. Can you give me 30 songs that include those themes? There's my 30 songs. How long would it take you to do that on Spotify? Any rap songs? I told you I like rap music. Okay, yep, there's rap songs that deal with that right there. Okay, I tried to get it to, to figure out what it would do if, if I was going to use one song and see if it would do it for me. Um, it, it didn't have the easiest time with that, but it still did generate a list of people that would fit with that. And then I wanted to know, can I get it to think of design approximately 15, 75 minute lessons that cover unit of study, unit would could cover the historical background. So I'm very specific here, but what I want it to do, I want 15 lessons or at least topics for lessons. So there's the lessons I could ask it and I didn't do this, but what would be a good um, learning goal for this lesson? What would be a big question to frame this lesson? What would be a lesson plan for this lesson? And chat GPT will generate that for you. So create timelines. Just curious, will it do timelines? Yep. Then I specified later on here in the timeline. Now I want it to include social, political, and technological advancements. The timeline now shifts a little bit, so it's more specific to those things. You'll notice that it brings things from non-Western places. Uh, I had the idea of putting students into guilds or groups based on their interests, and I could spend some time thinking about how to do this. It, I, I just don't want to spend the time, and I'm curious right away, will it generate this? Give me 10 different guilds I could use to organize and group students. Well, there's 10 right there. I'm going to do this. It, it's just too easy. It's all set up for me. Okay, I could blend these groups together if I need to. Now, I want to consider for that same class some sort of a Monday to Friday schedule for where every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is themed. I gave an example of that, like a map at Monday, told it what I wanted it to do, and then I wanted a day where they were in their guilds. Okay, can you suggest a few different schedules like this? Yep, so there's a few different schedules. Every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you get some structure to the class, kids know what to expect. It gives me some alternatives, so I could go from the top and the bottom, pick these. And they say, can you give me one more example? And there's one more example, okay? I quite like this idea, and I think it saves me a ton of time. It just sets it up for me. Uh, I think for one of the assessments throughout the course I wanna do is I wanna have students have a, a percentage of their mark attached to journal reflections where they make individual connections about history then has impacted their lives now. So I've been very specific about what I want those journal prompts to include, and it generated 20 possible journal prompts for me to use would do 30 would do 40 however many I ask it to it's going to generate it if i don't like these i generate a new one if i want a variation on this question like i said i just edit it here rejig or reframe how i ask it and save and submit it gives me another one and it'll be here one of two two of two okay getting through to the rest here and i want a different set of journal prompts for a different unit we'll do it unit based yep there's some unit based journal prompts okay now can you have those four, let me do this one for. Oh, regenerate them. So they're having students write. Yep. Yeah. They're regenerated now, making personal connections. Another unit, there's that. Uh, looking for alternative ways to assess student learning. I don't want them to write an essay. What else could they do? Here's a few other suggestions. Again, not mind blowing. It just it just generates for me some different ideas. I've got them right there. And this is kind of where I left off for this one right now. What I did do is I switched to this one to generate a few other ideas for me. You have to kind of reload this. It checks the server because I've kind of been idle for a bit here. Um, here's one where I Oh yeah, right here. So it told me that ChatGPT can be used to um, provide students answer questions and see how, and then check students' understanding of them. So I said, well, let's try it. Can you ask me multiple choice questions about the age of exploration and check my answer? So it gives me a question. I give my answer. Correct. Okay. Ask me another question. Here's another question. What's your answer? 
correct. So kind of cool that it will do that and generate that for me. Um, the last thing I want to show you before I stop this video, because I know we're getting close here, is it's report card time. And I got to generate report card comments for students in grade nine issues in Canadian geography. I need several comments to reflect student achievement, overall curriculum expectations, comments require strength, area improvement, next step. Comments should require varying levels of ability in the course. Clarifiers related to effectiveness can be used in a range from limited, some considerable, to thorough. Comments should reflect the unit on thinking like a geographer. Okay. Boom. Comments. Okay. Now here's what I was talking about before. Go this way. There's the one for a unit on physical environment. There's ones for unit on livable communities. There's a generic one for the, the course as a whole. Okay, and notice it's formulated a bit differently here each time. So it does provide me with some variations on that. Okay, and there you go. So I'll pause that here for now. Multiple uses. I still have a list of prompts I want to ask it that I have not yet had it generate. Um, I'm, I'm continuing to build that. Uh, I just think it's a great tool in terms of efficiency, time saver, game changer in education. I'm just showing you what it can do for now. My next video is going to talk about the sort of like, like why use chat GPT and how, how it is a revolutionary game changer for education. And I, I think the world in any field of employment in general. So thanks for listening. Hit me up if you've got any questions, uh, menlo.teach at gmail.com. And, uh, if you like the video, just give it a like. Thanks.